<laughs> Alexa, what day of the week is September 17th? September 17th is National Calendar. On the calendar Friday. September 17th is National Calendar Day. Friday. 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 Friday.
I have gotten one, but I haven't gone through with it. Uh -oh. um, it's to make little TikTok covers of every song on Billie Eilish's new album. Is that why you're doing all these TikTok covers? Yes. Okay. I have finally learned how to get my voice into the system, make it clear instead of just yelling it out. Yeah, no, it's actually really good for TikTok. Uh, yeah. Like, ridiculously Thank good. You. No problem. In fact, if you're not following her on TikTok, think. Chesney Claire. Over 26,000 oh, followers there. at the moment. It's up there? Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> that's, that's what this is for, right here. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. It's up there. Yes. Chesney Claire. So, I thought we'd get a little introspective. Because I've asked my usual interview questions. To her, uh, about not a year ago, over a year ago, it was right um, right around our birthdays, because we are two days apart. Remember? Uh huh. Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah. So, any, I, I was wondering, how are things different for twenty year old twenty? Yes. Yeah. Now, officially twenty. Yes. Officially twenty. How, the teens. how are things different for twenty year old? Living in Vegas, Chesney, compared to fresh out of high school and living in Branson. Oh Chesney. my gosh. If I knew then, would I know now? Because <laughs> when I first talked to you, you had just moved here and COVID shut you down. Yeah, exactly. Um, just leaving high school, Chesney, just graduated. Um, so much has changed. Um, it, my whole entire life has changed. I have lost 60 pounds <laughs> yes, and, all that dancing uh and covid loss covid weight loss yeah that that made me she jumped ahead again oh my gosh <laughs> i need to take a look at that i was gonna say <laughs> did getting covid affect your voice <laughs> um should i answer that now sure yeah covid did not affect my voice but it did affect my smell and my taste you smell fine <laughs> <laughs> you're uh, funny you're funny but no, like, um, Josh, I mean. like sodas, <laughs> yeah. sodas, they all taste like flowers, and uh, Sauvage Cologne smells like limes. But, uh, so, so it hasn't affected your voice? No. Have you had any, I was going to ask, have you had to do any, like, vocal therapy or anything for it? Um, I haven't, it, it hasn't been very stressful in my voice. I feel like it's pretty much the same, but, uh. I am taking vocal lessons. I gotta mm -hmm. stay on top of that. So, taking vocal lessons from the Righteous Brothers, Bucky Heard. I was gonna say both of them. <laughs> one of them. I was gonna say one guy. <laughs> Just Bucky Heard. I'm I actually, him. it, it. I'm Just sorry. That's, that's the that downside to standing here. Is there are cabinets and people do that I'm all the fidgeting, time. Fidgeting, yeah. It's okay. <laughs> um, I was surprised. I was, I was sitting in a parking lot of the Double Down, mm -hmm. as you do, and <laughs> right there was a, a digital a billboard and. The Righteous Brothers kept popping yeah. up every so I'm like, they're still alive? Do you know how they got their name? No. At a show, someone from the crowd yelled, That's Righteous Brothers! That's how they got it. Really? Really. That's interesting. That's I, some cool trivia. I don't know what they, they were called beforehand, but... That's cool. <laughs> uh, speaking of cool little trivia here, you've been endorsed by Tommy Chong of Cheech and Chong? Yes! How <laughs> How how did your world meet? Is what I want to know. <laughs> um, I'm guessing it was through my my management at the time. Um, but I got sent an email of Tommy Chong sending me a a video endorsing my music, and he said, "Your music is banging, man." Yes, he did. <laughs> it's on her website. And I was just like, is that Tommy Chong." <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, cool story. Um, but you know what? I try to post that stuff on TikTok, and nobody sees it. And it's like, come on, is Tom, it. Tommy Chong telling me that my music's good? The one time where one of my videos in on TikTok, I'm on TikTok, by the way. <laughs> uh, that's where I do all like the, the, the silly things. But the one time where I get a K on, you know, over 10,000 views on one mm -hmm. of my videos, it's just ridiculous. Me just, just reacting, just duetting or stitching. Just ridiculous stuff. The stuff where I actually like, here's a song I wrote. I'm putting effort into this. Yeah. I'm doing, I'm, you know, doing some cosplay and actually singing something from Greatest Showman on Earth or, mm. or whatever. Exactly. <laughs> and, and that's, that's what, TikTok. That's, that definitely keeps happening to me. Like, my first video that blew up my TikTok was of my mom. And she was doing crazy stuff, like, just holding that down and letting the ice fall on the floor. <laughs> and, like, just a bunch of weird videos of her, and it got 700,000 views. And I'm like... 
I'm like, okay. And so I try to post my music and it gets 300 views. And I'm like, oh, yeah. that doesn't make any sense. Well, from my understanding, tangent. <laughs> Moving on. Okay. That's one of my songs. I know. <laughs> any Moogles? What's, what's now on the horizon? Of aside from the Josie and the Exposing, which I'm is a terrible name for an award. Exposing? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's interesting. Um, always try to have new goals. Um, when I finish a goal, I check it off and make a new goal. Um, but my goal right now is to um, get my social media numbers up and uh, get more listeners over the web and eventually start touring when it's time. There you go. You're I said this in the first interview. She's taken a very mature, grown-up route to this. You know, releasing one song at a time that's been professionally produced and really like pushing that, and it seems to be working. I mean, <laughs> based on what I'm seeing. But also, it's you're you're not in a hurry to get out on stage necessarily. Um. Let me rephrase it. You're not in a hurry to say buy my stuff. <laughs> Well, I try to I try to push myself as much as I can, market myself um, across social medias, so I can have those numbers to be um, to be able to start off in front of a bigger crowd. Because I've already I've already sang in bars in Louisiana. I sang country music in bars. I've mm -hmm. already done that, and so now I'm trying to make it go a step forward. So um, taking my time with releasing the singles, but I'm doing it very strategically. And putting a lot of marketing and promotion behind it, and um, taking it one step at a time. But I'm, I'm manifesting it that it's going to happen, so it there will happen. <laughs> and my father-in-law wants to say something. What you got? <laughs> Piggybacking off of what you just said. Okay. I'm going to ask you the advice question again. Any advice for new musicians, new singers? Yes. Don't slack on your social media because that's where your streams come from and you need to be definitely working on your social media but also being very strategic with what you are doing um, as far as putting out your singles or EP or album, whatever. Um, and if you're really in this to do it, then you gotta start it and you gotta not quit it. Um, being as young as I am, I've run into lots of problems and difficulties with being able to play live um, at certain places and uh, you just overcome it. <laughs> you overcome it and you do it from home and say, look what you look what you missed out on. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, so just keep going. Just keep going. Once again, you, that, is, that is the mature answer because no one gives that advice. Everyone's always talking about how Oh, you know, practice, 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 um, change your strings or, you know, something music, making the music related. And if, if you're in a, if you're serious about music business, like making it in the music business, that social media is like a huge part of it now. That's, that's what record labels look for when mm -hmm. they look at you, they look at your numbers. What do you bring to the table? What, what are you bringing you, to, are what? you going to be able to bring in a crowd, an audience by yourself? That's mm -hmm. what everybody wants to know. How much work? Or do you, do you, are you actually putting into it? Yeah. I actually I interviewed Josh Coots, who is um, he he runs a, a record label named Mixtape Records up there, and uh, I asked him. I said, any advice the people that want to get on a record label? He said, don't expect me to do anything for you. You've got to <laughs> you you got to show me that you're willing to do the work, so that when I bring you opportunities, right? I know you know you're there, you're ready to go, um, and and that you are. Staying on top of things like social media right. and in audience engagement and stuff, um, it's it's not always the glamorous part of it. But yeah, like you're you're pretty. How often do you do TikToks? Once a day or? Um, I try to do them. You know, as often as I. Do you batch record like I do? No, <laughs> but I just I I just I keep up with them. Basically, I do like maybe two or three a week. Uh, two or three TikToks a week. I know I should probably be making more, but they want more. run out of content <laughs> and then um, have to go through the process of recording at home to make quality covers, um, but it seems to be working. And uh, my Facebook is popping lately. <laughs> it's a miracle because I've been trying to get it to be popping for a while now. 
Um, but my reach on my Facebook was over 200,000. I looked at my insights. Right, my nutley, that's... Yeah, a lot. And I'm like... Respect. It's paying off. <laughs> it's happening. Yeah. And this is where it's so easy to rest on your laurels and just be like, okay, cool. I can take, now I can relax. Yeah. No. No. Yeah, it's... <laughs> when, when you know, maybe when you're, you're, you're known by a first name or... Yeah. You know. <laughs> I said, I always say, when, when, when people ask me, what's your end goal? I'm like, to be able to walk into a room and not have to introduce myself. To need security to walk into a room. <laughs> exactly. And I stand by that, you know? Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> um, I once asked somebody what uh, about gear, mm-hmm. and, I, and he had the best answer. He said, roadie. roadie. I want a roadie. <laughs> well, that's his dream gear. And I was like, yeah. That's funny. Yeah, I want that. I want... I want somebody to do all the, the stuff that I have to do for these YouTube videos. Exactly. It's all me. <laughs> I, I want somebody to be like, you know what I want? I want a dedicated YouTube space. I literally live here. I would love to be like, okay, I'm going to the office and go to a dedicated YouTube space. Yeah. Everything is set up. Everything is, you know, like it should be. I've got a team that's behind the camera doing all the fancy stuff. But, eh. That's a, that, that, that depends a lot on... Things like room six dot shop, <laughs> where my merch is, and uh, things Shout like out. yes, and things like Patreon. Um, but I, I feel like you have you have that rarity. If I can gush for a second, I feel like you have that rarity in the music business, which is you're not naive, but you're also not jaded. Mm-hmm. You seem to actually be excited about all of it. As opposed to just, I'm doing what I have to do to get to where I'm happy with it. Right. And you can't live like that. No. And that's what keeps you in love with the music business, is mm-hmm. that you're not going, oh my gosh, I have to come do an interview with Room 6 later. Oh my gosh. Well, you wouldn't be the first person Um, to Come on. It's part of the business. It's what you, yeah. it's not, It's. it is essentially what you have to do. You have to show up to these things you mm-hmm. have to interact with people you have to talk to people that you've never even thought of talking to before but that all gets you there slowly Very and it so. will it will it will work eventually get us there cheers Ching. this is just water mom <laughs> potato water mm-hmm. it's vodka oh, <laughs> oh I'm it's just not kidding. potato it's, it's water. just water <laughs> It's just water. If you'll, you'll, if you'll look over here, it's just sodas. There's gummy bears for Pete's sake. Mm-hmm. Or gummy snacks. You put those off for me? I did. I, you ask anybody that's been... I, I run a high-quality craft services that. table. <laughs> but no bucket of beers this time. So yeah. that's okay. All right. Uh, we're actually... We're almost done. Okay. This was a little shorter. You know, like I said, I asked all the usual questions. Just a little catch-up. Mm, but... Speaking of ketchup, aside from the 9-11 gig at Harley-Davidson mm-hmm. on Warm Springs in Henderson, Nevada, yes. what else is on the horizon for shows? Anything? Um, or anything new, new dropping? Yes. Wow. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. You don't know about this? Okay, so I have a brand new single coming out September 17th, and it's called Distracted. And um, cool story about this song. This was written in Nashville, Um, got set up with these writers and producers. Um, The producer for the song is Ryan Lau, and he is superb at what he does. And the co-writer on this song with me is Keegan Boss. And Keegan Boss won an episode of Songland, and so he's written a song for Julia Michaels, and it was a banger. And now this song's going to be a banger. So he wrote this song. (laughs) We co-wrote, yeah. Okay. Yeah, say, we co-wrote. Because you, you do a lot of the writing. Yeah, I yeah. do. On that Taylor Swift team. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway. That Taylor um, Swift's my girl. <laughs> so, and that was December? Uh, huh? December, you said? Uh, no. Uh, September. Oh, I'm sorry. I <laughs> thought I heard December. I was like, oh, September. she's really pitching it early. All right. Yeah. September 17th. September 17th. Yeah. Which is a what day of the week? I don't know. It's not in my mind right now. I'm wow. not sure. <laughs> Alexa, what day of the week is September 17th? September 17th, National Calendar. On the calendar, Friday. September 17th, National Calendar. Friday. 
National Apple Dumpling Day. <laughs> National Monte Cristo Day. <laughs> National Monte Cristo Day and National That's Apple called... Dumpling Day. That sounds like a yummy meal. Yeah. So, all right. Please try saying the specific. Alexa, stop. <laughs> She's fine. Anyway. Mm -hmm. That's I'm awesome. Asking, but it's on your calendar. Alexa, <laughs> go home. Sorry. Alexa, stop. Have a great day. <laughs> You're making it hard, Alexa. <laughs> Can't write this. All right. So, uh, actually, mm -hmm. the day after that, mm -hmm. this interview is going to go live. Really? Rally. Really? So. Well. There you go. We. We'll have some video after the music video. After mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> uh, do you have anything else to say to your adoring fans? Um, thank you guys for watching, and thank you to Room 6 for having me. Um, bing. I don't know what you're going to put up there, but something. Um, and ch ch check me out. Follow me on social medias. I'm at Chesney Claire. Bing, 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 whatever. <laughs> And uh, I will be back eventually. <laughs> I'll be back. And you're watching the Disney Channel. No, don't. <laughs> and now I'm sued. Uh, <laughs> all right. Um, seriously, I want to thank Chesney for coming by. I want to thank you for watching. Stick around for... Yes, Chloe. She's leaving soon. Don't worry. The diva dog is, is insisting. She, she's had her... Okay, she's, she's over soon. Don't be jelly. Jealous. Seriously, though, thank you for watching. Stick around. And um, we're going to have a wonderful video. Remember to be amazing. And we'll see you next time on Room 6. So. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba.